and welcome back to the learn to code podcast today is going to be a very late edition of the podcast and as you can see um i just got up from a lo um i went to sleep earlier earlier today so there is the it's 10 p.m 26 minutes and 26 minutes um Today is a very special day for me. It's my birthday, 28 May 2019. Um, today I'm celebrating with you all um, 38 years old of, of living on this earth. Thankfully, thank to God. Mm. With a glass of wine um, and enjoying life. Uh, and I am enjoying life as I am. Um, as only I can, I guess. I've been sleeping most of the day. Uh, I don't feel very good on my tummy. Uh, I think uh, I may be a little sick of eating too much today. Um, I uh, spent the day with my wife and enjoy myself. So, uh, well, that's about it. Today, uh, Today, uh, I managed to install Ubuntu Desktop 19.04, and I haven't done much since the installation. I've been, uh, been watching some YouTube videos here and there, as you can see. Um, I managed to configure the, the video card again. Um, uh, here it is. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you are actually seeing the NVIDIA X server settings window. Um, this is the place where you can actually configure your video card and your monitors. Uh, I've been doing some work, you know, the usual, um, the regular um, updating of the software. Let me see. Let's see. I just updated the software on Ubuntu after installation. Um, I usually just install the the bare minimum and um, start from there. There is a lot of software that I may like to install. Um, right now, I'm using this installation for uh, still learning uh, Java programming and Maybe you may like to see me <laughs> uh, installing some of that software. Let us see. The first thing I need to do um, is, is if, if I'm going to be working on Java, I need to install the Java virtual machine and or the JDK, the Java development environment. So let's Google about it. I want to install the JDK. I think it's 12 now on Ubuntu. And okay. Let's see one of those. Um, basically, the JDK is the software that I need to compile and execute the, the, the Java programs that I wish to install and, well, I, that I wish to run. Um, I am currently seeing how to install Oracle Java 12. Um, I may like to install the Open JDK instead. Let me see. Yeah. I'd rather uh, install the OpenJDK, not for other reason other than the fact that the OpenJDK is easier to install. Open, open Java Development Kit. Uh, let's see this one here. There we go. This tutorial is for the is for Ubuntu 18.04. That's the previous version, the long-term version. Mm, never mind. 
Well, the thing that I um, always forget about uh, installing Java is uh, all the things that I need to do to be able to install the uh, the Java development kit. If I, if I recall, uh, I can do that here on the on the Linux terminal on the terminal window. It should not be that hard to too hard to do. So uh, what I install in Ubuntu today, well. I don't know why, uh, but my previous installation of Ubuntu, uh, I guess, got corrupted or something because I was unable to uh, to get into it today. Um, alas, I didn't have uh, anything done yet there, so it was just a, a, a clean installation anyway. So that's what I installed in uh, Ubuntu again. And... Ubuntu, I'm not really a fan of the looks of Ubuntu. Uh, yet, the reason why I'm using Ubuntu today is because it's so far away from my video games on Windows. I, I am a very weak man, actually. So, uh, the temptation to play Heroes of the Storm or Final Fantasy XIV is too, is too big for me. I must confess for a for a grown ass man to be <laughs> unable to control himself with video games, yeah, I know. But that's me, so. Um, let's make this a little bigger. Let's make the font a little bigger so you can actually see things clearly with us, without too much effort, may I say. Uh, I guess a little bigger. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, what I'm doing right now is figuring out uh, how big should I make the font be. Uh, let's see. I, I think that's a good size for you to see it, to actually see what's going on. So on this installation of Ubuntu, all I had done is basically install Ubuntu. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, I installed Git right after that. <laughs> I haven't installed anything else, and Git is not uh, a piece of software that I may say it's necessary on my day-to-day -day usage of um, of the operating system itself. Um, yet I always find myself installing Git right after I install anything else, uh, after I install the operating system, even on Windows. I don't know why. I guess I just feel safer with that on the, on the machine. I don't know why. I think it's just uh, a human thing, I guess. I install Git. Uh, I believe I need... To, I don't need to, no. Mm, okay, let's, let's take a look for what do I need to do to install Ubuntu. There we go. How to install OpenJDK on Ubuntu 19. Okay. Uh, perhaps I should be more specific. O OpenJDK 11. Um, yes, I, I think 11 is the last version out. I don't, remo I don't remember. What's the last version of... JDK. Okay. Let's see. Okay, let's see the version history. Is Java Standard Edition 12. So let's look for that first. Let me see if I can actually install the, I guess is only JDK, open JDK 12. Let's see this. There we go. I'm sorry for the podcast being a, a little boring so far. Don't doesn't matter. I just found out a website which is going to teach me how to install open JDK 12 and Oracle JDK 12 on Ubuntu 1904. 
It may be very confusing, especially if you are just learning Java. Uh, if you install, wait, if I recall, if I install IntelliJ idea, uh, IntelliJ guys include um, a virtual machine and a compiler, I believe. Maybe I should just do that. But no, let's let's just finish this one. Okay, so let's install OpenJDK 12. So what do I need to do? First, an, a sudo apt update. Um, that's a command that is very standard. It's going to look, on, look for updates on the internet uh, for the software that I already have installed and the list of software and it's going to update the list of software that i am able to install so okay and then i should in run a command sudo apt install open jdk dash 12 dash jdk so that's the package i'm going to be installing let's copy and paste it here and there we go it's asking me if i really want to install all those packages and dependencies let's say yes why not a very responsible move for my part of course <laughs> did i mention that i am 38 years old already i'm getting closer to 40 and i don't feel the pressure yet i guess if I let go through the last couple of years, maybe I'm going to suffer from the infamous uh, midlife crisis. I guess, I hope that my wife is, spares the, I can spare the, the painful truths of, of that to my wife, I guess. Okay, so it already installed all that. Uh, if I am interested in installing the headless version of OpenJDK, what is a headless system? The headless system, what is that? Um, that's weird. OpenJDK headless, what is that? Let's. If I wish to install that, but first. I may like to know what is the headless version. Okay. What is OpenJDK 12 headless? What is this? Yeah, what's the difference? Okay. Headless mode is a system configuration in which the display device, keyboard, or mouse is lacking. Sounds unexpected, but actually you can perform different operations in this mode, even with graphic data. Hmm, that's interesting. Headless is the same version than the latter without the support of keyboard, mouse, and display systems. Hence, it has less dependencies and makes it more suitable for server application. Actually, I do do that. I do. Um, I run my Java programs on, on the terminal console, either on Ubuntu or on Windows 10 and Windows Server 12, I believe. So uh, I wonder, I guess it's not necessary really for my case because I'm going to be working on a uh, on a visual desktop, so I don't think it's going to be necessary. Okay, let's get back to the instructions. Okay, let's verify with the classic Java space dash version. And I am using OpenJDK version 12.0.1. Okay. And I guess I also have Java C dot space dash version. 
There we go. Okay, so now uh, we should be able to write some code and run a basic hello world, a classic hello world program. Since I'm very lazy, I'm going to download uh, a hello world Java program. But first, let's. Uh, I need a text editor to do this. So I'm going to copy the source code for this file, for this program. Let's copy that. And on Ubuntu, it should be an application here. Um, let's see. Text. There is a text editor here included on Ubuntu. I'm going to paste the code here. And I'm going to save it. On my, let's save it on the documents folder. Let's create here. Uh, hello world folder and here let's save it as hello world.java so far so good and immediately after saving the program that way we can see here let me see if I can I can make the text a little bigger so the people watching me on YouTube can actually understand what I'm seeing here. Okay, let me see. Uh, I'm looking for the font. There we go. Okay, let's let's make it a little bigger. There we go. That sh that should be just fine. there we go so this hello world program is really complete it's, it's not it's really simple indeed and it teaches how to properly do uh, documentation using a block of uh, comments a, a, a commented block it reads uh, it starts not with code. It doesn't start with with actual code. It starts with a uh, with a big um, comment with a big comment block, and it reads for the people on the podcast compilation. And I am um, deliver the actual command to actually compile the program, which is Java C space hello world dot Java, and then there is another line which reads execution java space hello world so let's do that uh, let's copy the command just as is i go into the terminal window let's clear the screen let's list uh, print working directory i am on my home directory for my user jorge and here I list in the folders and I do have a folder called documents cd space documents to get into that if I list I can see the hello world folder here let's get into that cd hello world and I can see the hello world java file here listed so now that I am on the terminal window inside the folder where my source code file is let's paste the command to compile the program and see if it works java c space hello world h is uppercase and w is uppercase to dot java so after executing that line it doesn't return anything so that means that the compilation that compilation of the hello world.java file was successful and now if we get back to the text editor the execution of the program is java space hello world with the same casing so let's paste this here and there we go we have a functional installation of java and I can actually work like this. Um, I don't hate or love too much IDEs. That's uh, 
uh, integrated development environments. Uh, I do love the IntelliJ IDEA um, IDE, it's very functional and I use it all the time. Uh, many people believe that the text editor is a very important part of the development process. I just believe that whatever tool uh, makes you happy and is functional for and allows you to produce the code that you want is just fine. So let's keep reading the, the source code. Um, after the compilation and execution lines, it reads prints. Hello world, by tradition, this is everyone's first program. Um, and then it reads the, the terminal command line symbol uh, with, an with an example of the execution, which reads Java space hello world, and then the output, which reads hello world. Very simple stuff. These 17 lines of text are comments. They are not part of the program, they serve to remind us about its properties. The first two lines tell us what, the type, what to type to compile and test the program. The next line describes the purpose of the program. The next few lines give a sample execution of the program and the resulting output. We will always include such lines in our programs and encourage you to do the same. And this, my friends, is uh, the boilerplate that I may like to include on every single uh, source code file that I release. And uh, what is boilerplate code? Well, basically, it's code that you just basically copy and paste and uh, and you don't really think about it. You just put it. You just put it there. In my practice, um, I consider using boilerplate code only with comments, which many people may argue that comments aren't really um, source code. Uh, I disagree with that idea because in the end, I believe that. <coughs> that comments, comments tell the human what the program does. <coughs> and the code tells the computer what to do. So I do consider comments part of the code, and as such, that's what I consider it boilerplate. Um, I am including this on all my exercise files and, and all my sample files and my, even my working files. I do some sometimes I do translate this into Spanish because uh, if I'm working uh, with my college um, with my colleagues uh, most of them only speak Spanish anyway so I'm trying to make my programs easier to understand even for people who doesn't know how to program in Java and that's a very important thing may I say so the class, uh, the hello world code, in it in cell is very simple. The first line is a public class hello world, open bracket, which creates a class name hello world. In Java, we must be very careful with the uh, with the casing using um, with the user's case letters on the names of variables and classes because it it actually matters. Is case sensitive, Java is case sensitive. And what that means is that if you write hello with a uppercase H, um, it's not the same word as hello with a lowercase H. So there is a difference and it must be, uh, as long as you name your variables in a consistent manner, respecting the casing all the way, you are not having any problems. Um, if you don't, if you don't have, um, if you don't get used to it in the beginning, uh, you may find yourself um, debugging problems because of the naming of certain variables. Maybe the declaration doesn't match the actual use in every single case. Um, no pun intended. So I may suggest you to be very careful when you are naming your types 
your classes, your interfaces, your variables, everything. And respect and be consistent with your use of case of casing. So the second line reads public static void main. So here is the declaration of the main method of this class, which is the first method that runs automatically without invoking it. And you open a parenthesis and it receives a single parameter which is uh, which is a string array. So we're going to play with this a little bit, you know. Why not? So as the current program is, when I execute the program, it only prints hello world. Hello world, uh, if we move up to the next line, it reads a comment which reads prints hello world to the terminal window. And the next line is the actual command. Is the system class dot out dot print ln open parenthesis and a string which reads hello hello colon world and this is at the actual command used to print the hello world to the terminal window and we can make some changes here uh, for example one of the classic changes that i always do with the hello world program when i'm teaching uh, someone else to actually program something in java is to concatenate using the plus sign and include the arguments um, of the program. For example, the, the parameter args, uh, open, open bracket, zero, close bracket. So I, I already know that args is of type of string. So I can use an element of that, of that uh, array as a text to be concatenated with hello world so what I'm going to do here is delete the word uh, word um, and just use the argument that I'm going to pass on I'm going to save this let's save the file and let's compile on the terminal window with java c space hello world dot java and let's run the program again with java space hello world and here we get we get an exception which reads in thread main and there is a, a long ass name for the array index out of bounds exception uh, which is basically means that if i execute this program as is i'm not sending a parameter to the main method which means that when the line uh, that that is going to to print out the message on the terminal is not going to run properly why because i because the string that i wish to to print out is requiring an argument which i haven't passed so it doesn't access that's why the array index is out of bounds because it's trying to print out an element that doesn't exist the array is empty that's why it doesn't exist not even the first index the index zero so if i execute the program again and i type my name jorge the program is just going to run fine uh, i i'm getting the hello uh, colon jorge and the program just runs perfectly fine And here is where basically I just, um, I show the difference between compilation mistakes. Uh, that's where you, your source code gets uh, a semicolon missing maybe when your program doesn't even compile. And the difference between that and an exception on runtime because the problem compiled just fine. I didn't realize it was the problem until I ran the program. And that's where basically this means that I do have an unintended problem here, uh, which is basically known on the software development community as a bug. Because you don't necessarily need to know that you have it. What happens if I from the beginning just run my program like this 
and I don't see the problem. And and then what's going to happen is that I'm going to leave my code as is. I'm not addressing the problem because maybe I don't. I just don't know that there is a problem here. And this is one of my. This is an ability that I lack currently. I do not know about how to do um, unit testing. I know it exists. I haven't learned it yet because I am still learning, learning the basics of Java. Yet I'm considering that it would be a good idea to, to get into that, actually. Uh, because I'm, I'm finding myself uh, digging more and more about the Java development community and uh, what is able to do with Java. And I see that by the time that I learn the basics uh, of all that I wish to learn, <laughs> maybe I should be, I should just be, um, I think it's, it's, it's about time that I get my hands into JUnit and learn how to use it uh, for my benefit and the benefit of my, my, my software. So I don't, so, Basically, unit testing avoids the necessity of myself finding these uh, runtime exceptions by myself and just basically program a test and find out where my software is lacking. So how do we solve this little problem here? Well, uh, there, there are several pro uh, ways to do uh, things here, for example. Uh, one thing that I can do is uh, uh, get the system out print line hello uh, message uh, between a try catch block. And whenever I receive the exception, I may just print hello world and continue with my life. Uh, another way to solve this is to basically, um, let's, let's do that first. Uh, another way to solve this may be to just uh, ask if the string array is empty or not. And if the string array is not empty, uh, I may like to know if the, if the element, is the first element of the array um, contains a variable or contains, uh, contains something, I may like to know if the the contents of the array argument is em is an empty string, because that may be another problem too. You know. Uh, let's try the try catch thing first. For example, here a try block. I believe I need to open curly brackets. Uh, and then a catch a catch block I believe uh, this is the method call okay there we go There we go. So what happens if I catch, I don't remember the try catch syntax very well, so forgive me. As an exception E, system dot out dot print ln, oh. You you are not actually seeing this. Let me. There we go. Let me change the size of the window a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Okay. Let's put here. A hello world message and call it a day so there we go i believe it's like this the sentence i don't remember very well it's been a while since i programmed using exceptions here let's try to compile that 
it compiles very well let's try to run it again and I'm yet in the hello world so here is a simple solution so what happened with the exception then since I created a try catch block here um, when the message failed because it, it actually failed again um, I only hide it I only hide the exception and did something uh, else so I tried to print out the hello the hello world program it didn't it didn't work so it created an exception I catch the exception and I don't do anything with the exception the only thing I do is print out hello world so if anything else uh, fails if something fails on the print of the message what I'm getting is hello world and if I run the program the program again with my name um, I'm getting the message with my name so in this case the program does what the client needs to do what the client expect the program to do so um, this is what the program is expected to do uh, there are other ways to actually achieve the same objective which are a little bit um, more involved more sophisticated may I say many people use um, validation of the data you uh, of the data using if if statements you can actually ask if um, the string uh, argument uh, exists or not you may like to ask is the string argument exists okay that's very well uh, is the string argument an empty string because you may consider that as an as a, how do you call it for example if i run the program here instead of jorge i use um, the an empty string as a parameter then when i when i execute the program i only get in the hello uh, column and nothing else after that so i guess that may be considered a bug in some cases i don't consider it to be in this case because it's a very simple program uh, i guess that this is very uh, i think that the flexibility of java is both a course and its greatest blessing because you really need to understand how the mechanics work to avoid confusion in the future even with a program so simple as this one i can begin to think on on several ways that you may actually make a mess <laughs> on this little program and that just came by the simple fact of using the arcs parameter when you run the program so the hello world program has been installed everything is so fine and i feel complete at this time but uh, when i realized that i need to speak this um, to i get tired of some things for example to uh, then my need to remember the syntax um, obviously when you work on a project using uh, the same programming language uh, all the time it's really easy to remember all the syntax but in my case um, since I am as, uh, I'm not only a programmer I am a database administrator so I manage HQL all the time and I am currently programming uh, or may I say coding a website for another client now so I do jump between uh, syntax and programming languages a lot and I do guess that every single software developer which, get, which gets his money or her money from software development um, that person also jumps through different programming languages and it's very common for me to uh, to mistake um, some syntax from one language and confuse it to belong to another so that happens to me all the time so don't be embarrassed by that 
it happens to me all the time um, I do really like Java it teaches me uh, how to think in the great scheme of things because uh, for a smaller pro for the small programs you don't really need Java you can live your life programming on C or well C is the ba is the classic no you know you can solve all your problems using C of course you can the problem is that as time passes and the complexity of your problem grows and the complexity and sophistication of your solution grows well functional programming is not so sexy in the end so this is the program here very simple uh, I'm going to leave it like that and to finish the episode and, and the video episode because I, I'm going to publish this on YouTube later because processing video is not as fast and easy as to process audio so you may be listening to myself uh, rambling here a little bit intoxicated with wine so you're going to get the the sense of this podcast long before um, I'm going to actually publish this video here okay so what else do I want to install? Uh, IntelliJ The IntelliJ idea Community edition uh, Yes, I agree mm -hmm. Maybe I should look for that on the actual app store The software, the Ubuntu software store It's basically an app store IntelliJ idea community. So I going to install this version Just because I want to have an easier time installing this Let's introduce the password and wait for the download and Thankfully, I do have a very decent internet connection for download. So There we go My wife really enjoys this uh, my internet service because she can actually watch Netflix on 4K quality and it's very fast I am using uh, uh, Ubiquiti products for to manage my network I am using a natural router light uh, I bought that way before uh, I think it was released on 2015 or 2016 I don't remember so I bought it that year because um, after reading the specs, it, it is a, an awesome ro router. It's not a Wi-Fi router. Maybe that's the reason why it's not really popular with, with the gaming community. But yet, um, it's an amazing router. It's basically a, a natural computer running a, a Linux distribution and it's basically like the, um, like PF Sense Linux distro was used to be uh, yet in a very small package so you don't need an entire computer for that um, it's the best router I've been having on my entire life to date it's still yet in firmware update so I do really recommend it and for video games it's amazing you you don't you cannot get a uh, more stable connection with that it's, it's, it's just amazing and i do have my wife in watching uh, amazon prime video um netflix and youtube all the time on the tv at 4k when i am playing and it, it's just a it's just a wonderful machine something to to really admire the engineering on that device is amazing Okay, let's see if the idea community edition is working. There we go. Okay. Uh, I confirmed that I had read the set the terms. Uh, send. Yeah, why not? I'm going to keep the dark theme because I am always on the dark, on a dark place. Why not? And let's see. 
And there we go. So I already installed IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. Uh, let's create a hello world program here, why not? It's already detecting the Java 12 version. So let's continue. Let's create a hello world program. And you are going to be called hello world, obviously. And finish. Shop tips on start to disable, and there we go. It's a very small um, window. Let's try no ID annotation attached. I guess I want to attach them now. Let's run the program. It's building and. Hola. <laughs> it's building and is now run. Hello world is printed to the console here. So that's it, I guess. Um, the last list and to finish the podcast, I'm going to install Visual Studio Code because it's my favorite um, text editor. So Visual Studio Code. There we go. It's it's also. Ah, there is an insider's version now. Okay, what's the difference? I guess you are getting a... Uh, um, I guess this is the, pre the the testing version, maybe? I'm going to install the, the stable version because I'm not really that into Visual Studio Code. I use it as a tool. Uh, I'm not really into the development of the, of the tool itself. It's a great tool, may I say. Uh, I I just don't have the uh, the knowledge required to actually help the development of the tool any, anyway. So let's add this to my favorites since I am here. Okay, and there we go. I do have uh, Visual Studio Code now. And if I want, I may even open the file of the Hello World program. It's asking me to install a, a Java extension pack. Yeah, why not? It's recommended. I need to reload the window. Let's reload the window. There we go. Java 12 is supported. Nice. Okay. And here's my... I, rem I don't remember if I can... Uh, class path is incomplete, only syntax error will be reported. Uh, that's fine, I don't really need to run the source code here. I know uh, that Visual Studio Code can actually run uh, Java source code here and compile. Uh, I'm not really tied into that, I just use the, the text editor as a text editor and I just go back to the terminal window and execute the compiling here. Um, it's a wonderful text editor. I'm going to customize it later. Uh, but I believe that the podcast has been long enough. Uh, yeah, Linux is very clean. I do really recommend it. Um, I use Ubuntu and not many people uh, well, many people have told me that they are happy that I'm using Linux for my software development job. Uh, they are not happy that I'm using Ubuntu. And well, how bad can that be? Because um, I see Ubuntu as another tool. Um, I'm not necessarily a Linux nerd. And Ubuntu does the job for me. I try and uh, I have tried several other distributions, um, yet I do believe that my time is better spent uh, learning how to actually program software rather than uh, troubleshooting uh, operated system errors and figuring out how to install software. Uh, installing software on on distributions like. Um, uh, how do you say, um, like Manjaro maybe, it's not so simple sometimes, uh, especially if the package for 
For Manjaro doesn't exist yet, and you actually... Oh, let's let's see this run. Can I run the program here? Oh, hell! Look at this, I can actually run the program here. There is a link here. Uh, and debug, can I debug this? There we go. Oh, that's really interesting. I can actually see a debug console and an output console here. Look at this. Output. Problems, no problems. The boot console and the terminal. Oh, I do have access to the terminal here. There we go. I have everything here. I don't need anything else. I see a lot of folders here. Maybe there are temporary, temporary folders, maybe. Ah, no. This is the representation of the, of the Mexican symbols. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I guess I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you for listening to me rambling. I am a little bit intoxicated by this wine right now, so I'm sorry if I'm rambling without um, any special, without a, 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 a specific direction. I do, I do enjoy life as it is, and this day was a very quiet and simple one. Uh, and I hope that my, the rest of my life stays that way. Maybe not, uh, but a man can dream, I guess. But thank you for coming, and goodbye.